Now, uh, we're going to start with a news story. This is front page headlines today. Boris Johnson yesterday accused the BBC of wetness, right? Wetness were his words. This is over last night of the proms. You may be aware of this, uh, the whole row about this. He expressed disbelief at the BBC's decision to perform Rule Britannia and Land of Hope and Glory without lyrics. This is last night of the proms. If you've never watched last night of the proms, I reckon they're going to have a big audience this year. Here is what the Prime Minister had to say. I think it's time we stopped our cringing embarrassment about our history, about our traditions and about our culture. And we stop this general bout of self-recrimination and wetness. Well, let's get reaction to uh, all of that. We're joined by political campaigner uh, Femi Ulu-Wulai and Nigel Farage on this. Uh, Femi, first of all, what do you make of what the Prime Minister had to say on this subject? Uh, well, it's essentially saying that, given that the main reason people, why people are upset about this song, uh, a very specific group of people, namely the BBC for some reason, uh, is the issue that it says uh, Britain ruled the waves and never ever shall be slaves. He's talking about the slave trade and he's saying we shouldn't be embarrassed about that. It's essentially him just trying to provoke a culture war to distract from everything he's done, his own fact that he, he himself said that the problem in Africa is not that we were once in charge, but that we're not in charge anymore. He's just trying to provoke people. He knows that it plays well to his base. He knows that he can use this to say, they're coming after your culture and stir up people. Uh, but this idea that the BBC is somehow leading the march for racial equality when it took them two weeks to apologise for a news presenter using the N-word on a live news yeah, broadcast. That's not what I asked you. What I asked you is, uh, what do you think of what he's had to say about rule Britannia? You're telling me why you think he said it, but from your point of view, and I think the audience at home would just like to know, what is your particular problem with the lyrics of rule Britannia? Well, to be honest, uh, I don't watch the proms. Most people um, don't really care about that song because we, ne we almost never sing it. But as for that song specifically, um, it was written at the time that the UK was actively engaged in the slave trade, selling, pe selling people across the, across the waves, selling black slaves. So they were singing about how we, sh we ourselves will never be slaves. If I were to use a, an analogy, can you imagine if a rapist, and this is not an exaggeration because slavery involved a lot of rape, if a rapist wrote a song about how he himself had never been raped, would you sing that song? No, okay. because you know that that song would be that song would be bragging about that rapist's position at the top of the food chain. You okay. would let's, never let's, sing let's that. Let's get reaction from Nigel Farage now uh, on all of this. Um, is 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 Femi's offence justified? Look, first things first. I'm very pleased Boris Johnson said what he did. He's been rather silent for a long time, uh, and the BBC have got this hopelessly wrong. The overwhelming majority of people in this country who care about this want the proms to be as they've always been. As for the song itself, well, the song Royal Britannia is about the fight for liberty. Uh, it's about this country, you know, ever since Viking invasions and King Alfred. Um, and of course, pretty relevant when you think that 80 years ago, 80 years ago today, we were engaged in the Battle of Britain, which if we hadn't won, the whole of Europe would have been Nazi for decades and decades. So we have always been about liberty. And I make this point to Femi. Rather than constantly attacking everything this country has ever stood for, can we agree that it's a very good thing that Britain did rule the waves because for oh, 50 years in the 1800s, it was the British Navy that got rid of the slave trade when all the other countries wanted to continue it. We are the one country okay. in the Western world that fought hard at massive cost in money and lives mm -hmm. to get rid of the slave trade. And why don't we celebrate that fact? Femi, what do, you, what do you make of that, that it was actually the, the Navy that helped stop the slave trade? A lot of people are, are coming back with that argument. Mm. Uh, to be honest, I don't put, I don't, I'm not really going to spend a lot of time on this argument that we needed to engage in slavery in order to end slavery. And I'm going to point out the fact that, as, as Nigel Farage just said, he's saying that we're coming after our culture. This is, this is the, what they're doing. Um, People marched in the streets uh, about Black Lives Matter. Not one of the people was marching about rural Britannia. They wanted to uh, in, in introduce blind CVs because right now Oxford research shows that people from with ethnic sounding names have to send between 70 and 90% yes, so, so of applications so could, to get a job offer. Is that not a that point? Is not what we're, that yeah. is not the issue here. But Femi, is that, is that the point? Is that 
people are saying, why are we wasting time trying to rewrite history? The points you make are very valid. There are so many bigger issues now moving forward, particularly yes. fighting racism and getting people's understanding and awareness. And here we are spending all this time talking about something that, that was in history that we can't rewrite, we can't change. We can move forward and change it. You so, make a very good point that we shouldn't be spending all this time talking about it. But every time I mention the things we should be talking about, I keep getting shut down. Yes, as, because as I you're, you were booked on this show today to talk about your objections to rural mm. Britannia and Land of Hope and Glory. Now, if you don't have objections to them, let us know. Would you allow them still to play out or do you think they should be banned? I was booked on this show to talk about the reasons why this song is an issue. And the reason why the song is an issue, especially in the context we're all living through it in terms of Black Lives Matter, is because it's a distraction. Now, I'm going to explain to you why it's a distraction. It is a distraction because these people want to distract from the fact that Boris Johnson, with his majority of MPs, could, you, could do things to uh, address systemic racism. He could introduce blind CVs. Instead, they want, they want Boris Johnson is saying we shouldn't be embarrassed about slavery. Now Farage spends his, his weekends in a boat in the channel shouting asylum seekers. They're, they're, they want to distract you from the things that they've done. Boris Johnson caused the, the highest excess death rate in all of Europe. Nigel Farage is the reason why at the end of October, we're not only going to be facing an end of furlough, uh, but we're also uh, going to be uh, facing uh, at the end of the Brexit negotiations. Nigel, Nigel, we're about to Nigel let, let's, let's yeah. hear Nigel. Yeah. But it's very interesting, isn't it, that people like Femi, who were opposed to the result of the referendum, wanted it to be overturned, are the same people who want to denigrate this country, not just its history, but its present as well. Uh, and now look, if you're at home getting angry at what Fem is saying, please don't. He represents a tiny extremist minority. The vast majority, huge majority of Britons are tolerant, open, decent people. We are without doubt the most tolerant country in the whole of Europe. Uh, we want racial equality and fairness in our society. What we don't want is a campaign that masquerades under Black Lives Matters that effectively is a Marxist campaign to bring down this country, to end capitalism, worst of all, their stated aim to defund the police force. And that is why... I want to move on. We've, talk, we've talked about... Sorry to interrupt you, Femi. We've talked about Rule Britannia. I want to uh, move on to Land of Hope and Glory, because it's both songs that the BBC have said will not be sung at the proms. Um, and Dame Vera Lynn's rendition of Land and Hope of Glory has gone uh, to the top of the UK iTunes chart today. Well, let's just hear some of that, and then we will talk about the lyrics and what you both think of them. Nigel Farage, would you in any way accept um, these sort of renditions belong to a different era and have no relevance to young black people like, like Femi and in today's modern world? No, I mean, Land of Hope and Glory is slightly different, of course, to Royal Britannia. Land of Hope and Glory is talking about a time where we were the biggest, strongest country in the world and we had this great big empire. But have a think about that. In all the history of humankind, never has a country with an empire managed to form, post the empire, an association such as we have in the Commonwealth. And again, that's the remarkable thing about the British Empire. Whatever you think about that, every country in Europe was trying to build their own. And we still have this fantastic relationship with Jamaica and India and Australia and Canada. And it's something I think that should be celebrated. And that's why Land of Hope and Glory can be sung, not just by white British people, but by people all over the world. And you know what? It is. Because last night at the proms is something people all over the world watch. They love it. They enjoy it. It's uniquely British. It's uplifting. It's patriotic. And it celebrates our place, not just in history, but this remarkable relationship we have with all of our former colonies, which we should be very proud of. Femi, we, we've done a poll with our viewers this morning saying, should singing Rule Britannia and Land of Hope and Glory be banned? 91% uh, of them at the moment say no. So, um... Can you explain to our viewers what it is about the lyrics of Land of Hope of Glory? Because people might not think about actually what they're singing. They're just enjoying singing it. What is it that, that you object to and you think that should be left behind? So, again, um, if we're talking about this song specifically, uh, the, the line about how our, bind, uh, our bounds are wider set still, the idea of increasing our territory, uh, the idea of the UK as an empire constantly increasing its territory, 
uh, might not sit so well with you if you live in Northern Ireland and you're on the nationalist side of things and believe that, na that Northern Ireland should be belong to Ireland as a united Ireland. That's kind of the point. Um, but again, this, this narrative is being driven by the BBC, the same BBC that took two weeks to, to apologize for using the N-word on a live news broadcast. The idea that this represents the fight for, for racial equality yeah. is laughable. Uh, Ferry, yeah, just, I just want to say, you've just brought up Northern Ireland, my pet subject here. Uh, the Irish National Anthem, which is called the Soldier's Song. Let me just read you some words from the Irish National Anthem. Uh, some have come from a land beyond the waves, sworn to be free. No more our ancient sire land shall shelter the despot or the slave. Do you have an issue with the word slave used in the Irish National Anthem? Um, no, no, it says, it says no longer shall our, our, our country shelter the despot or the slave. Yeah. And, and you need to explain the, the context of, of what they meant by that. And I'm asking you, do you have an explanation of the context? Because every time the S word seems to be used, you have an issue with it. Well, uh, it, it's, it's an issue within the context of the rule Britannia on the basis that we were bragging about how we were in a position of enslaving other countries whilst, are not, whilst not ourselves being enslaved. Um, you I need to explain here, to me the could go national. through the French national anthem, the Italian national anthem, uh, the Portuguese national anthem, um, the Mexican uh, national anthem. Do you think we should have an issue with national anthems in general, Nigel Farage? No, look, we are all of us, all of us in our countries, forged by our history. And there are parts of our history that we adore. And there are parts of our history that we're slightly ashamed of. And that is the same for every country in the world. I mean, goodness me, I tell you what, read out the words in English of the Marseillais, the French national anthem. I mean, it's real blood and gut stuff. Look, the fact is, whatever you look back at in British history, we have been the country above all that has fought for liberty, that has fought for freedom, that has fought for religious tolerance, that has fought against slavery and made the rest of the world end it. We should be, not all of it, but let's be proud of our culture, our history, our past, and let's stop these extremists like Femi from trying to tear it down. Uh, Femi, a BBC spokesman has said, for the avoidance of any doubt, these songs will be sung next year. Um, and we look forward to their traditional return next year. So it's only this year. How do you feel about that? Uh, well, like I said, this is the BBC being the BBC. The idea that they're leading the charge, that this was some lasting change they wanted to make and not simply a... You could almost argue that this was an attempt, an attempt to inspire people like Nigel Farage to get on their soapbox and say, look, they're coming after your culture. Look at these extremists. When it wasn't us who asked for this. Nobody on the Black Lives Matter was talking about the proms. We were asking for real systemic, real change to the systemic racism in the country. Uh, we have asked uh, you watching at home, should singing Rural Britannia and Land of Hope of Glory be banned? 10% of you say yes. That means 90% Nigel Farage have said no. Yeah, good common sense. And, you know, we are proud of our country, proud of our culture. Uh, and I think, you know, I'm not worried about Femi, as I say. He represents this tiny number. What I'm worried about is the fact that all of us are forced to pay a licence fee to a BBC who are happy uh, and, frankly, uh, right throughout all the trauma we've been through in the last few months, happy to pander to this minority view. And uh, I, I frankly don't think the BBC is fit for purpose. And I suspect that what this little row over Royal Britannia will do is lead to a much bigger, broader debate about do we need the BBC do we all need to be paying for this in the 21st century? Well, that's, a, that's another debate. Um, thank you very much, both of you, for your, for your thoughts on that. Femi Oluwole and Nigel Farage, thank you very much.